Today in series of Doplex Scale interviews, we have with us Dr. Avdish Kumar Singh. He's a speaker and chairman of Association of Physicians of India, Research Society of Studies in Diabetes in India, and Endocrine Society of India. He has around 75 publications where his major research focuses on management of type 2 diabetes. He's also a reviewer for various journals and has been the principal investigator in various phase 3 and phase 4 clinical trials. Thank you, sir, for the interview. My pleasure. So let's begin with the first question. Uh, what is your opinion about the efficacy and safety of teneligliptin? Uh, well, teneligliptin uh, is among one of the DPP-4 inhibitors in the class, uh, which is recently being used in our country. Uh, perhaps uh, the efficacy data uh, of teneligliptin is not that robust uh, as compared to the other existing DPP-4 inhibitor which we have currently for clinical use in our country. Uh, from the efficacy perspective, uh, tenalegliptin seems to have little less DPP-4 inhibition compared to other DPP-4 inhibitor which is currently available like citagliptin, uh, vildagliptin and linagliptin. Uh, even uh, their uh, PKPD trial, the DPP-4 inhibition maximal DPP-4 inhibition was 65 percent, whereas if you compare citagliptin for that matter, they have got 99 percent uh, DPP-4 inhibition. So is with the bildagliptin and linagliptin. So once uh, a DPP-4 inhibitor has a, a lesser DPP-4 inhibition, you expect them to be little less efficacious. Now when we see the trial uh, data uh, of uh, tenalegliptin, because tenalegliptin is primarily you know, studied in Japan, uh, Korea and we have got very small data in India. Uh, if you look back their uh, efficacy, uh, they are efficacious but not that robust as other gliptins is. So that is about the efficacy. When you look into the safety part, the, there is one big issue with tenalegliptin in terms of safety that it has not passed the you know QT prolongation trial. Uh, currently all uh, new, newer anti-diabetic drugs are supposed to undergo a mandatory, uh, you know, QT prolongation trial. Uh, in that particular trial, all DPP-4 inhibitors had passed uh, except tenalegliptin. Tenalegliptin was approved only in the Japan and, and Japanese PMDA, while they gave them the approval, they also said that there is a signal of increase in QT interval, especially with the higher dose of tenalegliptin. So, tenalegliptin uh, must undergo a, a proper CB outcome trial so that prove that uh, it has got no clinical significance in prolonging QT interval. As you know that QT interval uh, has got you know something to do with cardiac arrhythmia. Uh, so uh, many patient who tends to have a little longer QT prolongation uh, might develop arrhythmia uh, if you prescribe tenalegliptin. So even if efficacy may be lower, I would have accepted it. But if the safety is not clearly well known, uh, especially in a patients with cardiac disease, uh, then unfortunately uh, I would not accept uh, the CB safety of tenalegliptin, and and that's why uh, many of the uh, you know uh, endocrinologists are not very keen to use tenalegliptin because of safety data of, of tenalegliptin. Uh, so, Dr. O, can you elaborate on initiation and intensification of premixed insulin type 2 diabetes management? Well, uh, premixed insulin uh, is one of the popular uh, insulin which is being used in, in our country, uh, perhaps because of the comfort that uh, both shorter acting and intermediate acting insulin uh, is there in one, uh, you know, insulin injections. 80 percent of uh, prescriptions in our part of world uh, is primarily with premix insulin. Uh, the comfort is clearly there, uh, efficacy is clearly there, but they also have got higher hypoglycemia. Uh, also we have got one limitations because dose is fixed. 
in a premix insulin you have got either 30 is to 70 ratio of shorter acting and intermediate acting or 50 50 or 25 75 but sometimes you need to titrate the dose of each of the component of premix insulin which you can't do if you have got a prefixed formulations mm -hmm. like a premix insulin so these are wonderful and most commonly used uh, insulin currently for initiation and intensification uh, of uh, diabetes treatment uh, but it also has got the limitations that uh, you can't titrate the dose properly because of the fixed ratio of both shorter acting and intermediate acting insulin. Okay. Uh, so, doctor, moving on to the next question. What is your opinion about the safety and efficacy of metformin in gestational diabetes? Uh, well, uh, metformin, uh, see, the gold standard of uh, gestational diabetes treatment uh, still remains the insulin, uh, but then... Uh, we do have some of the oral drugs which is categorized at category B that includes metformin and glibenclamide. These are two drugs which has been given category B and so is the insulin. All insulins are category B, not all insulins means some of the insulins are category B drug. Human insulins are category B drug. Uh, if you see the basal insulin uh, portfolio only uh, the Detemir has uh, category B. So currently in the basal insulin. Uh, you have got NPH and uh, Detemir, which is approved for use in gestational diabetes. And when you talk about the drug, uh, although metformin and glibenclamide has been given category B drug, and there are studies uh, in the different part of the world where uh, both glibenclamide and metformin were, uh, you know, uh, almost equal like insulin. Uh, so, in resource poor country like us, uh, the safety of metformin is is clearly there. Um, you know, the only issue which people felt like that because metformin crosses placenta, there may have some detrimental effect on fetus, but then uh, the, there was no detrimental effect seen with metformin. Uh, so, the data which is, is currently available to us, uh, this suggests that metformin use uh, may be clearly there in gestational diabetes. The only the drawback with metformin remains is uh, it's a slowly acting drug. Uh, gestational diabetes is a very narrow windows of opportunity during pregnancy. Gestational diabetes is when it is diagnosed during the second trimester. So, once a, uh, you know, a, a lady is in second trimester, you have already crossed uh, you know, first trimester. So, you are post three month of gestation. You have got six month window of treating your sugar getting corrected. The metformin uh, would be one helpful drug, but then many patient requires additional insulin therapy because metformin alone cannot uh, bring your target, uh, which is the current target, maybe fasting uh, of 90 and, and two hour post lunch to less than 120. So, metformin is, is a good drug, but then metformin alone might not, uh, you know, bring the blood sugar to target and that is why 30 to 40 percent patient need additional insulin therapy with metformin as well. But from the efficacy and the safety standpoint, uh, someone who is, uh, who are on metformin and and, and uh, sugar is well controlled, there is no point stopping the drug, you should continue through the gestation. We also have got data patients of polycystic ovarian disease who, who are now pregnant and was on metformin, one should continue metformin at least till the first trimester. So, metformin uh, seems to have uh, emerging role in gestational diabetes. Okay. Uh, so, doctor, can you discuss the advances in basal insulin therapy? Well, so basal insulin has really uh, come up well now. Uh, if you see the evolution of basal insulin since the discovery of uh, NPH in 1942, mm -hmm. uh, it took 50 years uh, for the next uh, generation modern basal insulin analog to get approval. In 1992, we had first uh, basal analog in the form of insulin glargine U100, which was approved. So, from 1942 NPH to 1992 uh, glargine, it took 50 years to have a newer basal insulin, which can uh, provide you lesser hypoglycemia mm -hmm. compared with the existing NPH. NPH. So, after the 1992, uh, after the glargine uh, discovery, uh, perhaps the treatment of uh, diabetes uh, changed, uh, you know, very much because the glargine were uh, much longer, flatter than the NPH insulin as far as PKPD is concerned. Also, uh, there were much lesser nocturnal hypoglycemia with insulin glargine compared to NPH. Since then, we have further development in insulin after glargine, another insulin, Detemir was discovered. Detemir was uh, the good in the, you know, 
uh, way that uh, Detemir uh, had perhaps least weight gain among the entire uh, basal insulin class, uh, but also had a limitations with Detemir that you need uh, to have a higher dose uh, with the Detemir. So that's why it didn't become much popular uh, to clinician because you need to at least increase the dose by 20 to 25 percent compared to glargine. But the Detemir has uh, still two advantages that it is the only basal insulin right now which is currently approved in the gestational diabetes as I talked about and it causes least weight gain among the entire class of basal insulin. After the Detemir then we have got approval of uh, digludec insulin. The digludec had head to head trial with the glargine and uh, there are a number of trials uh, where uh, digludec was found to be superior to glargine U100. Uh, especially uh, in reducing nocturnal hypoglycemia because these are treat to target trials. So, there was no difference uh, in the glucose control even uh, the glargine uh, never uh, beat NPH, NPH was never beaten by any insulin. So, the whatever advantage when we are seeking for basal insulin is in terms of having a minimal or lower hypoglycemia. So, glargine was definitely a improvisation over NPH uh, and digludec is a further improvisation over uh, insulin glass in U100. So, digludec in number of trials was seen to have lower nocturnal hypoglycemia. Now, very recently we have got glass in U300 now, which is a newer formulation of glass in U100. And uh, in head to head trial uh, of glass in U300 to glass in U100, glass in U300 found to be having a lesser nocturnal hypoglycemia compared to glass in U100. So, naturally, uh, with the uh, commencement of uh, time we could produce a newer formulation, newer insulin which perhaps has got a better, a better you know, hypoglycemic uh, lowering uh, potential uh, compared to the previously existing basal insulin. Okay. Uh, sir, thank you so much for the interview. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. My thank pleasure. You.